Hey, welcome back to the Back with Gourmet. Today we got something different for you. Uh, we're going to uh, document this process and we're going to build a smoker uh, from scratch. And I'll show you the victim that we're going to turn into one hell of a great upright smoker. And here it is. This is a large air tank. Um, don't know how, quite how many gallons it is, but it's pretty big. Just recovered this. Uh, it was uh, headed to a dumpster. So took three people to get it in the back of this pickup. Um, and it's got some serious potential to become a smoker and we're going to step you through how uh, how we're going to do it well first things first we got a few appendages sticking off of this we got some a couple of ball valves here there's three three ball valves we're going to keep this stuff just going to unscrew it from the tank up here and um, sorry about the zooming there we're just going to unscrew this stuff, take it off. We got a, uh, looks like a bleed down at the bottom there. Probably going to leave that on for the most part. It's not going to hinder me uh, moving it around. This is very heavy. It's got a pressure relief valve here at the top, several fittings. We'll save all those. And then it has a pressure gauge here, which would make a great place to put our thermometer and another line on this side. So we're going to go ahead and take all this stuff off just to make it easier to handle. We're going to save all the parts. All right, next thing we're gonna do is, is we're, we're mapping out where we're gonna cut the top off of this. And I'm, I wanna go below this weld here. And I wanna have room to uh, rivet on a uh, backer piece in there um, to make the lid fit on it um, properly. So all we did was measure down uh, the same distance from the weld all the way around and then put a piece of blue tape there for a guide. And uh, we're gonna use real basic tools here. We, I don't have a plasma cutter or anything like that. We're just gonna use a grinder and cut off wheel see how it works now we're gonna see what uh, the inside of our tank looks like for the first time probably rusty it's an air tank so not as bad as I expected it to be. Uh, this was in a, a pretty professional and industrial type of situation, so it was in pretty good shape. But we'll clean this up. Uh, it's going to be a great, great project. Well, here's uh, why I decided to make this project because I, when we found this tank, uh, first thing I did was measure it, and it's uh, 24 inches in diameter. Or, uh, and uh, you know, cross, and that makes it perfect for our 22 inch Weber grill rack. Uh, we can buy these these grill racks, you can get these at your Lowe's, Home Depot, uh, any of your grill stores. So, we're gonna make some brackets for that, and um, you know, it's gonna be uh, similar to a uh, UDS or ugly drum smoker, where it's running a fire basket at the bottom. Um, you know, so we'll, uh, we'll fabricate that a little later in this project. But um, if you're going to be smaller than 22, it's going to be difficult to find your, your grill rack unless you're going to manufacture your own. In this case, um, we don't have to do that. Skips a step. All right, here we have it uh, cut down. We took out uh, 12 inches of the height. That's going to leave us about as tall as a a 22 inch Weber Smoky Mountain and or a ugly drum smoker. Um, I was going to take it down uh, beyond this this hole but after considering how tall a, a UDS is or a 22 and considering there's going to be a firebox in the bottom um, I decided to only take 12 inches off of it. So it's a beast. It's a uh, huge weight but once we get some casters on these feet down here it'll be easy to move around step one completed for today 
continue the project later. Hey boys and girls, Smoker Project continue. This morning we put on uh, some nice poly casters. Uh, this thing is so heavy, it's really hard to move around without it. I got like, two locking ones and uh, two just regular ones and attached those to the holes where this used to mount to the floor. So we got those on there, make it easier to move, and we sanded out the inside of it a little bit. And that's all we've done so far. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna work on making the rim here that's gonna hold the lid in place. And luckily, we still have this piece. I put it out for the scrap and then I uh, thought about it today. I was like, uh, hope nobody got that because I need it. So luckily nobody got it yet. Recovered it from roadside. And we're gonna cut another um, inch and a half, uh, inch and three quarter band off of this uh, section we cut out. We're gonna use that for our rim. And it's already bent in the right radius, or close to it. Okay, we successfully cut that uh, piece loose. And we're gonna use this, uh, like I said earlier, for our rim to hold our lid on. So we're gonna clean this up and uh, go. All right, we got our ring uh, cut and prepped. And you see, you know, it's obviously it's the exact same size as the barrel. So what we gotta do now is we're just gonna cut it, and then uh, we'll be able to put it on the inside of this, and that's gonna retain our lid. Let's go ahead and get that done. Okay, we 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 cut the band and we just poke it down, poke it down in here, and kind of like. Um, this is gonna, you know, we got overlap here. So we're gonna go ahead and mark it, but when we mark it, I'm gonna mark it just a little long because, you know, it's not quite seating all the way to the edges over here. I'd rather have it just a little longer than too short. So we're gonna go ahead and cut that much of it off. Test it again. We want it, those ends to come together perfectly. Well, it turns out that cut worked pretty much perfect the first time. <clears throat> had to shoehorn it in there a little bit. See there are still some small gaps between the uh, between the barrel and the, and the ring a little bit here. That's gonna tighten up as we attach it. Now you only want about uh, maybe a half inch of this sticking up above. We, um, and it's going to, you know, these are not perfect cuts. We don't have a machine here, so just uh, hand tools. So we can leave it a little high. Um, and then uh, grind it down even, because we're gonna put a bevel on this edge to make it easier to uh, take the lid off and on. But I'm gonna go ahead and get that positioned and then we'll start drilling it out and uh, get a couple rivets in it. Now, if you got a welder, which uh, we don't, um, go ahead, tack that thing on there. Okay, here's where you need a pair of vice grips to hold your uh, ring in place. We're just gonna kind of adjust it as we go along one in it now. We want to leave that. I've got about a uh, little more than a quarter of an inch of the lip sticking up. So we're going to clamp the band to the side. Here's where you need a really good drill bit. Um, this is like a the best one you can get from Lowe's. And we just got a cordless drill. Yeah. We're not uh, fabricators. We're just back with gourmet trying to make a new cooker. But if you get a good drill bit and you got a good cordless drill, like this Makita here, which is named after my dog, um, it doesn't take too awful long, a little pressure, to go through both layers of that steel. So then we're going to grab a, a rivet. You could also use self-tapping screws. Here I have a 5 16 steel rivet. We got the last one still stuck in there, I guess. Okay, so we're just going to put the, we're using a regular hand pop riveter. We're going to pop that all the way through the hole and just squeeze it till it breaks. Okay. Easy as that. Okay, your stem comes out. And okay, we'll just continue that around. And notice I started from the opposite side as my cut. So I want trying to pull this as tight to the side of the drum as possible, and it, this may open up. Uh, if it does, no big deal. All right, we have our rim 
Um, riveted on now, as, as expected, the gap did open up a little bit. You probably could avoid that if um, you made a little longer. I, I went about a quarter of an inch longer than the, um, the overlap and probably should have went about a half. Um, no biggie. It's going to hold the lid on, so now we're going to grind a bevel on it to make it easier to get the lid off and on. What I'm going to do is hold my, hold my grinder at about a 45 degree angle and just go around the edge and knock that edge off. All right, well, we ran a little snag here. Um, you know, I guess some of the metal in this thing uh, relieves this stress once it was cut. And now it's uh, this far from closing completely. Um, it does close most of the way. We're gonna have to create some tolerance in this thing, especially when it starts building up some smoke. We'll get where we won't be able to. The lid's heavy enough as it is. So we're done uh, messing with it today. Uh, we'll come up with a solution. Okay. We're doing a, a burn, see if that uh, helps to relax this metal, the stress on it, and I'll bring it back round. We pretty much determined that by relieving the top, we relieve the stress on the, the band in the center, and that popped it into a slight oval, that's why our lid won't fit. So we're gonna try this first. We had a pretty good fire going in there for a couple hours, now we're just gonna let it Burn out, cool down naturally, and I'll check it again tomorrow. And you, we've been uh, beating on this lid for a couple days, uh, trying to get it to work. We ended up loosening up the inside band to get it to fit as well as it does right now, which is not too bad. We went ahead and uh, put some regular old just gate handles on here. I riveted them on the top, so because that lid's heavy, we need at least two handles on it. So right now what we're doing is a test burn on it. I've got one uh, chimney of unlit charcoal in the pan and then a half a chimney of lit charcoal. It's been going for about 45 minutes. We just stuck the old uh, pressure relief valve back in there just to plug that hole off. And I've got the Maverick in there. It's been going uh, an hour now and this has been pretty stable at 2.30 to 2.20 for the last 20 minutes um, we just we left this hole wide open up here and I cut a new hole the air intake hole down here the same size as the top so uh, the same amount of airflow can come in and go out and right now uh, results pretty good it's 228 sitting right there so I wanted to test it to see if it was even going to cook before I even spent any more money on it. Because um, there's fewer things we want to do to it. But if it won't cook, then, you know, we would have abandoned it. But so far, it seems like it's doing pretty good. All right, we're kind of just testing this right now, but we wanted to figure out how to get this thing to maintain 250. Uh, it's a 261 now wide open so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these uh, reducer bushings that we had from the original uh, pieces and parts I'm just going to lightly screw that in the top and see what happens with our temperature okay smoker projects continues um, we worked out a few of the things we we got these brackets now in the uh, to hold the grill in and we just cut the whole inside of that with canola oil. I used some uh, used stuff out of the fry pans and just mopped it down really good. Did the same thing with the inside of the lid. So now we're gonna get a big fire gone. Got one chunk of oak on it. Full pan of charcoal down there. And we're gonna fire it hot and hopefully it'll take a cure. Uh, we did. Add, also add a, a damper here so it's, uh, it's kind of crude right now but we'll work on it all right well after four hours 
Uh, she's been holding 300 and it's hardly used any of the coals. I just opened the top, so that's why the log's firing up. Just wanted to take a look at the progress. It's starting to get a little shine to it on the inside. And that's what we want. So I just stirred that a little bit. And because we want to get it hot this time around. But I'm no I'm confident that this thing will run uh, 12 hours at 250, no problem. This is going to be the first cook on the uh, air tank smoker. See, we tried out our, uh, that's our Weber 22 inch uh, grill, fits fine. I'm going to take that off. We're already getting ready to start this minion method. Well, I bought about a half a pan of that. We're going to get a, a, make a regular basket like for a UDS to go in this eventually. Um, just in the testing phases. You see we do a, did a test cook on it, the, or a, a curing cook on it the other day. And it's taken quite well. A few spots all need to be hit again, but uh, it's nice and black on the inside. Under the lid looks good. So we're going to go ahead and fire it up. We got our uh, like a quarter chimney of lit coals. And just like you do with the Smoky Mountain or UDS, we'll put them right in the middle. Alrighty. And just gonna let that go. And in this case, we're gonna do a, a round roast, a small one on it, and we're only gonna cook it to medium. Um, just don't have time to do a long cook a day. But this will be the first cook on it. It has been doing pretty well in the test fires we've done. Um, so we're not even gonna preheat it. We're just gonna go get the roast, put it on there, and close it up. All right, there's our uh, first hunk of meat to cook on this baby. It's just a small round roast. And um, we're gonna go ahead and stick this big old lid on it. Unfortunately, I can't show you that because I need two hands to handle that baby. She's heavy. But it is starting to fit a lot better now that we fired this thing a few times. So. Whatever stress was in the middle is starting to relax and it's starting to fit a lot better. So we're going to stick it on there and forget about it. Come back and check on it in a few hours. Now here's the finished product from the smoker in four hours. Uh, nice round roast, uh, perfectly done medium. And we're going to tear into this guy right here with some of these uh, taters over here. And that's going to be awesome. <laughs> 